Today we're making an RPD station diorama. Vasco Toys, action figure dioramas and props. This video is the first of a multi-part series where I'm gonna show you how I build and paint this RPD station diorama, which is a commission for a customer. In case you don't know, this is actually the third version of an RPD station that I've done before. The first one was April of 2020, then I did one in February of 2021, and those two were pretty similar. This one's quite a bit different. It has some 3D printed parts and a functional gate that those other two did not. Because of that, I modeled the diorama and all the pieces I would need in Tinkercad. I planned the diorama to be 20 inches wide, 16 inches tall, and 7 inches deep, which is exactly what you see here in Tinkercad, sized out. Before I even put blade to foam, I decided to go ahead and print as many of these 3D printed parts as I could so I would make sure that they all fit properly and I got all my test prints out and that I didn't have any issues. Luckily for me, I have two printers and so I used my Kingrune KP3 to print some of the smaller pieces like the RPD signage. Now this prints far from perfect, but we're going to process it and make it look great. While that was on the King Rune, I was using my Ender 3 V2 to print my column pieces. Now there were four of these and they each took well over four hours to print, so I had to plan my time accordingly. One of the great things about using 3D printers is you can really be efficient with your time. So while things are printing, you can be doing things like this, carving out the different pieces of the diorama structure. Some of my carving's done with blades, and some of it's done with my Proxon. And when I use my Proxon, I'm a huge advocate of using a 3M fume mask to keep myself safe. I also turn on a fan to get some proper ventilation in my space. Next, I line up my cut, and away I go. Here I'm cutting each edge to make sure that they all have a 90 degree angle. I want to make sure this looks as professional and clean as possible. Now that the base is cut, I want to go ahead and get my wall piece cut. I want this to have some depth to it because it's going to house the gate. So I'm using 2 inch foam for the wall piece and what I'm doing is just sizing it up against the base that I just cut. Next I use the base as a template and I mark my spots for where I want to cut this with my Proxon. To make this project easier, I'm going to be using my Proxon foot pedal which gives me a lot more control. When the switch is turned on and you press the pedal, it lights up and we've got heat going to the wire so we can use it to cut our foam. I'm going to be using this to cut 2 inch foam so I need to turn the dial up higher than what it normally would be. I normally cut it like a 3 so I'm going to go at about a 5 for this. This is a pretty big piece of foam to manage on the Proxon so I'm using the foot pedal to allow myself to stop at certain points without causing extra bleed and how big the cuts are on the foam cutter. So there are certain parts of this that are not 90 degree angles. So you can see this is not an even angle. The top is more narrow than the bottom. And I really need these to line up 90 degrees so I won't have any issues when I get to the magnetizing stage. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it so that it fits better. And really all I'm doing here is shaving off any imperfections on the edges of this so that I don't have those issues. And now you can hopefully see that this is a 90 degree angle, so it's going to fit perfectly flush. All four sides are looking good. The next thing I do is mark the bottom of the piece with a B because that is going to be magnetized to the base. I want this piece to be 16 inches tall, so I'm using the drywall T-square to mark those spaces. And then it's back to the Proxon to cut off that excess that we marked. Alright guys, so now that I've used the Proxon to carve out the structure of this piece, I can check my work. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the width of the wall matches the width of the base, which it does, so that's good. And then the next thing I want to do is make sure that I don't have any issues with the wall standing on the base. And I don't, um, and if I did, you would see a tilt or something like that, but I've got a 90 degree angle on the bottom. So that means I'm going to be good to move on to magnetizing this piece which is what I'll be doing next. I've shown this process in some of my other videos, but in case you're new to the channel and you haven't seen those videos, I wanna make sure I am as complete as possible in my explanation, so I'm gonna show it again. 
I'm using some copper tubing that are the same size as the ceramic magnets that I'm going to use to magnetize the diorama. And what I'm doing is just carving a circle into each spot that I want a magnet to exist in. I accomplish that by doing a twisting motion down into the foam. Then I take my X-Acto knife and I cut my line the width of what the magnet is going to be so that it will fit right down in there. I always like to check my work before I glue them so I just pop the magnets in and make sure they fit. Everything checks out so time to use some low temperature hot glue to get these in place. By the way, I absolutely love this battery powered hot glue gun by Ryobi which runs on their OnePlus system. The next thing I do is put some magnets on top of the ones I just installed so that I can make an impression in the wall so I'll know exactly where to cut my lines and so those magnets will fit into the wall and line up perfectly with the polarity of the base magnets. I use the same process here with the copper tubing and the twisting motion to cut out these magnet spots. Then I also carve a line the width of the magnet to remove the foam and so I can insert those magnets into the spot and get this magnetized. The magnets that I have very clearly mark polarity so I just make sure that I'm not putting two negatives together or two positives together. And once again it's time to check my work. Everything looks like it's checking out. Now that the structure of the dial is in place, we're going to use this clear Gorilla Glue to glue our 3D printed parts together. Here I am putting together the different parts of the gate piece which I need to assemble and have dry so that I can cut out where that gate is going to be in the foam and start to install it. Using a scrap piece of foam to apply this Gorilla Glue evenly to the plastic is a pretty good little hack that I learned from my friend High School Creations. This glue needs to cure for 12 hours, so we'll set it aside. Next, I wanted to find the little foam platforms that these columns are going to sit on. I'm going to make two of these. You could cut these by hand, but I'm going to go ahead and do them on the Proxon, just so I keep with that 90 degree angle on the edges of this for gluing purposes. Here's a look at these as a dry fit underneath the pillars that are going to be on each side. And these are 3D printed parts that I'll be gluing. And then I'm going to put the gate that we're letting dry right here once I have it ready to be installed. The next step is to cut these specialized pieces on the facade of the diorama. I mark these with a permanent marker to make sure they're the same width as those pieces we just cut that go under the pillars. From here, I just make a straightforward cut using this 90 degree angle before adjusting the wire to an angled cut that I'll use to create the triangular pieces that will finish this facade piece. Remember to take your time when you're cutting an angle with the Proxon. And now I can glue them together with some low temperature hot glue. All right guys, here's the rough layout of what the RPD station is gonna look like. And now I've got the two gates solidified as one piece. Each one of these is made up of three pieces that you saw me glue together. So now what I'm going to do is trace where I want the gate to be and then cut that out. To do that, I position the gate where I want it to be and then I use an X-Acto knife just to loosely mark where the outskirts of the gate are going to be. That's not a full trace, I'm just making little puncture marks that I can use later in a more stable flat surface to trace where the gate is going to end up being. This is going to be a guideline that I'm going to use to actually cut this door out with the Proxon just to make it as precise as possible. And really the first thing I'm going to do is just cut these two vertical lines, cutting, turning off the heat, and then backing it out on one, and then repeating the process on the other side. To trace the arch portion of this, I'm using a compass with the pencil on the end of it. And now I'm going to do something I don't recommend for beginners. I'm going to go freehand on cutting the arch out with the Proxon. I do have a Shifting Land circle cutting jig that you could probably use for this part of the project. But because I wasn't carving a perfect circle, just an archway, I wanted to try to attempt it this way. This also would be almost impossible to do without the foot pedal because I would have to be reaching under to power the machine on and off. The foot pedal allows me to make that control as I'm cutting it and making sure that I stop when I need to. 
And after we're done cutting, I can just pop this out and see what my results are. There are a few little imperfections, but I can fix those with some processing techniques. All right, guys, it's time for me to texture each individual piece of this concrete build because all of these pieces that you're seeing are supposed to be concrete. So I'm going to do that with some tin foil, rolled up tin foil. And I'll show you guys that I'm actually going to do that each individual piece. So the base this piece, this piece, this, 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 the wall. And then once I've done that, I'll start gluing some things in place, but I wanna texture everything before I glue it together. Just makes it a little bit easier. I don't wanna bore you, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you little snippets of each piece where I was just using the tin foil to get coverage on the entire piece, making sure that I use some little impressions here and there to get that concrete look that we ultimately want. In the Resident Evil video games, there's cobblestone in some versions of the RPD station on the base. So what I'm doing here is just carving like a regular sidewalk line and then adding in those cobblestone carvings. Here's a super sped up look at what I'm doing here. I'm not doing anything in terms of planning, just trying to make these all different shapes and sizes, the way cobblestones are and the way it looks in some of the video games. After the lines are carved with the X-Acto knife, I use my trusty clay sculpting tool to define them because I am going to add mortar to this later, and this is going to allow the mortar someplace to go and add a, some more realism to the concrete and the cobblestone. And then, of course, for consistency, here's a super sped up version of me texturing the cobblestones with tinfoil and an actual rock. There are some spots on the diorama that have scoring lines and other defects that I want to fix. So I'm going to use some lightweight wall spackle to fill those in and fix those up. Whenever I do this, I just apply a generous amount and wipe it away with a gift card, allowing it to be somewhat flat on the surface. And so you don't really notice it at the end of the diorama project when you've painted everything. So I have my two gate pieces that are glued together now, but I also have these hinges that they're going to operate on. So I want you guys to see, these are two different pieces. So there's the piece that is going to serve as the holder for the hinge and then the hinge itself. And these are gonna rotate. So I have these as mirror images. So two on this side, two on that side. And now I need to glue them together, which I'm gonna continue to do with the Gorilla Glue like we did to glue these together. To sort of balance things out, I'm going to put these hinges, which are meant for this gate, on this side and not glue these in place. And I'm going to glue the two in place here. Now what we're going to do is install these gates. And you can see I have these hinges that I 3D printed which are the, just these little pieces here. I don't know how much you guys can see that. So the gate pieces have solidified from the glue and they're gonna sit here. So I have the spots pre-marked and once, uh, once they're glued in place, this is how the gate is gonna function. It's gonna open out this way, not inside. So you can see that that's what we're going for. And these should fit perfectly in that space once they're both glued in. So now what I've done is I've just marked where the top of each one of these little hinge pieces should be. So you've got this one's gonna be here, this one's gonna be here, and then these two as well on this side. And now as a little trick, just to make sure that when I'm doing the when I'm doing this I need these to be lined up properly. If I glue them without separately without having the gate attached, there there's a possibility that they won't be perfectly aligned and the gate won't hinge right. So I've turned the gate around and I'm going to glue these in place with the gate turned around knowing that I can I can take it out after it's done and put it the right way. Going to use this hot wire foam factory styro goo that I use all the time. Love how this stuff bonds to XPS. And so we're just going to go ahead and take some of it and place it right on these hinge pieces. I might have to
And to avoid redundancy, I just show the process for gluing the one side, but just know that I did the same exact thing on both sides of the gate. To maximize my time while that's drying, I go ahead and start sanding down the pillar pieces and the other 3D printed pieces using my Ryobi rotary tool. This is another safety first moment. I'm using a dust mask and goggles to protect my eyes because there are little particles of PLA plastic flying everywhere as I sand this down. The rotary head that I was using was pretty coarse on purpose, so now I'm going in with a finer grit sandpaper. I think this is a 120, just to smooth out some of what I was just doing on the pillar pieces. And since we're on the topic of sanding, I also use a nail file sometimes to sand some things down, especially with things like this that have multiple angles on them. I find these to be really useful, and this is what we're going to do to start processing this imperfect print that we had at the start of the project. After sanding each of the 3D printed parts, I'm going to use this primer to finish off the parts before painting. This is going to help us eliminate those layer lines along with the sanding that we did earlier. Some lightweight wall spackle is also going to help that on this RPD station sign where we had some gapping that the primer did not fill in. After that wall spackle dries, I go ahead and hit it with the same nail file that I used earlier on it to sand everything down. This is really going to help finish it so that it's going to be ready to go for paint. Now I'm going to go ahead and start gluing on the foam pieces that are going to go on the diorama as well as some of these processed 3D prints that we just finished up. Apologies for the lighting on this shot, not super great, but I am just hot gluing these foam pieces in place and then using some hot wire foam factory styro goo to glue the PLA parts in the bottom of the pillar. I continue with the hot wire foam factory styro goo to bond the PLA plastic to the foam and I just take my time, I'm showing you guys a sped up version of this, and install all of the different column pieces and all of the different column piece caps on this diorama. For the cap portion, I opted to put this right side up and let gravity help me as I was gluing these into place. Once those were in, it was time to install these two foam facade pieces that we created earlier. While everything sets in place, I'm going to go ahead and attach the gate pieces again just to test them out and make sure that they open and close the way I want. I didn't like the piece I originally had to work between these two foam pieces that we created for the facade. So what I'm going to do is place this upside down on a thicker piece of foam and I'm going to actually trace some permanent marker for lines that we can cut on an angle to have a better fitting piece here. I want this part to be sturdy because we're going to sit the sign on top of it so it needs to be really secure. So I use two different glues on this, hot wire foam factory styro glue for a long term set and also some hot glue for a short term set. Alright so what I'm going to be doing next is using some scrap foam to create trim that's going to go around the facade of the RPD station. And I'm actually going to use some scraps from another project to create this just so I don't waste my foam. Always keep your scraps. Once they're cut, I hot glue them in place. For this one, I really want to make sure that it goes straight across. There's no bending because we need this to look like a solid concrete pillar. I want to continue this look across the piece and I want it to have that angle that you see heading up to the triangular portion of this. So I'm just cutting those out now. And once they're ready, I just hot glue each one of them in place, give a little pressure, and we're good to go. There's a little gap above those facade pieces that I want to fill in, and this project foam from Dollar Tree works perfectly for that. All I do is place it upside down and then trace the outline, and use my utility knife to cut them out. We're making so much progress on this piece, we're almost done with part one, and here I go to just hot glue these with the low temperature hot glue gun in place. Also gluing this pre-cut piece in place as well. The very final step of part one is flipping this upside down and filling in all the gaps from the trim we just created so it looks like this is one huge concrete slab. That was a lot of work, but I really like the way this is coming out so far. Thanks for watching part one of this vlog build series where I'm building an RPD station action figure diorama for 112 scale figures. Part two is going to be coming up soon and that one is going to focus on painting this piece and installing some functional lighting. 
I hope you'll watch that one, and I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. See you in the next episode.